I'm trying to set the phone up without. Anyway, um, shout out to Boost ninety seven three, um, ins inspire me as well as well as my collective today. So today is a very special day, uh, because it's my. I'm gonna waste some gas. Today is a very special day because it's my husband's birthday, and I figured the best way I could honor and give a tribute to him is give you um, the story of maybe why I do the things that I do that I'll never put in a book because, I mean, you know, I just, I'm just, I've put, I've put it all in poems and uh, in everything, everything. I put my whole life and my whole entire soul in everything I do. And like some people, I don't, I don't make up. I don't front. I don't steal from somebody else's life and then make it mine. Everything I talk about, everything I write about, everything I sing about or whatever I do is a direct story. It's a true story. So, um, and my husband literally, literally is, has, was then and now my biggest, one of my biggest blessings and lessons. One of my biggest blessings and lessons because he, the ultimate, uh, wh whatever this stuff that, you know, people are on or tripping on now, so soulmates, twin flames, I don't, I don't, I don't know what that is, but my husband, Weldon David Baker, Staff Sergeant Weldon David Baker, Chef Weldon David Baker, that I would, you know, affectionately call Bake, um, you know, there's no such thing as a coincidence. People want to, you know, look at coincidences. It's a coincidence, it's a coincidence. But number one, if you know like you know what like you know, there's no such thing as coincidences. Synchronicities, yeah. And when the synchronicities fall right on line, like now, like today, today, like even like across the way, there's a lot of construction going on because there's a lot of construction going on everywhere. Everywhere. There's a lot of movement. There's a lot of construction going on everywhere and if you're not in some kind of way constructing a better life for you well anyway today is not about you uh if if any day is uh today is about the man who still has my heart but he gave me the biggest lesson ever I was raised, you, you see how I was raised. I, I sh I've shown you my mom and my dad. I mean, just, I was raised in a family that I need to be raised in for what I am and what I do. I was raised exactly where I, I was right where I needed to be and who I needed to be with to nurture and teach me. Therefore, when I met my husband, which is an interesting story in itself because uh at the time i met him i really didn't meet him well he's, he said i did one time but i didn't see him at a remote he would call me up when i was on foxy 99 he would call me like every night because he was working uh he was a chef and so he was preparing the food and stuff for the mps the next day or the squadron and stuff like that so he would, I guess when he was on night duty and doing the chef thing, he would call me up like clockwork. And, you know, I start, you know, when you start getting those favorite callers and he, st and he would call me up almost to the point where I was getting annoyed at it because I always knew it was him. I always knew it was him calling. He would call me like clockwork. And I mean, no, no offense to fans and stuff like that, but radio announcers, it's not that radio announcers are, are like, at least I wasn't. It wasn't like I thought I was uppity and too good to talk to somebody and blah, 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 blah. But when I'm working, I'm working. You understand what I'm saying? When I'm working, I'm working. And if you know me, I love my job. Uh, I love what I do. When I was at Foxy 99, the, 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 you know, my show was very active. I was very active with the audience. Remember, we were the first. We were the first. We were, you know, I was mother of Foxy. I was, I was, me and Tony Light, we were the first two voices you ever heard on Foxy 99. So that show, I set a precedent for everybody who has followed. I set a precedent for everybody who has came behind in that seven to midnight spot. 
all of them, whether they want to say it or not, all of them owe me credit. They won't do it because, you know, people are where they are here. But they, but if you know, I was the one that started the top nine at nine. Tony said, yeah, I'm not going to take that away from Tony. I was the one that started doing the cool Carolina nights. I was the one that was breaking format and, and, and Tony, two Pisces, you know, getting into it all the time because you know me, I don't do formats. I do what I feel like my audience needs to hear. I know music. I have always known music. I don't need a white boy or a white consultant or somebody to tell me about music, especially black music. No offense, white people, but you are not an expert on black music for me. I know music. I was raised with this shit. You just watched and caught. Let's be real with that. Mm-hmm. So as long as we can, uh, as long as long as we can meet on the table of truth, we're fine. It's. But let me say this: the irony about now is that you know the white boys turned around and they got it and they understood and they study the culture, and now it's black people who are missing it. And I can't be mad at, at the white boys or the white girls who get it, because it's a it's such a glorious culture. It's such a glorious. It's such a glorious energy. Our music, our craft, our art, and to let it be dumbed down to thugs and hoes and and drill and bullshit, you know. And I'm not gonna blame the white man on all that, even though he's very much responsible for that. But black people, niggas, you let you let that happen. You let that happen. Take your own responsibility. See, I was one of the ones that fought, still fighting. So you can't say shit to me. You know, you took the trick, you sucked the dick, you got the fame, and now they cast you aside and you want no I need help. Well, fuck it. You know, you 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 chose that. Shows a trick, got a trick. Back to my husband though, he would call me up. Like I said, I'm working, I'm doing my show. I am like full fledged in my show. When I came on on the air, I was about my show from seven to midnight, and I had that show rocking. I gave people the highest numbers they have ever had at Foxy Ninety Nine. The highest numbers they will ever have in Fox 99. And I started from scratch. It's, I'm, ooh, good God. Wait, wait, wait. Why am I? It's, it's, Jesus Christ. It is, uh, let me, uh, let me, what am I doing here? It is, let me, I, it's, it's not like, I'm sweating like crazy. And it's not like I don't have the gas to run the AC. <laughs> let me be comfortable today. Uh, at least for this moment. Let me be comfortable. So, I, you know, I rock numbers, like, and those numbers started from scratch. You know, it's real easy to have double-digit numbers when someone gave you a position that already had double-digit numbers. That's why I had to tell some people, they got really uppity about themselves at Foxy 99, who felt like, we did this and we did that and they tried to disrespect me this is years you know down the line and stuff like that you want to roll up at me like you know you brought foxy nine on the air and foxy 99 has you know is, is a, we're the we're the station with this i'm like bitch any monkey can take a car that is already made already test driven already built and running at top speed i didn't and i said that and i know i realized that now that, that you know that was you know I wasn't trying, well, you know, but it was just, it just pissed me off because the bottom line I was trying to say is you didn't make shit. You just took over a well-running machine and your job was to maintain it, period. Don't you ever roll up on me with some shit you did when you know goddamn well I did it first. I'm not a street soldier. I'm a fucking warrior kid. My mother and my dad were official warriors. That's why I ended up marrying an official warrior. So, uh, that being said, <laughs> he would call me up every night, every night, every night. But and, and and he wanted to get into these conversations, and I am working. So, I would just like not answer the phone, as the radio announcer will do. Like, I know who this is. I wouldn't answer the phone. And so, for a while, then he just stopped calling. And I realized... I miss his calls. I'm like, where is he? I was looking forward to his calls. Never met the man, never met the man a day in life. He said that I met him at a remote, but that I just kind of like, you know, glanced over him and didn't like engage, which I will do that sometimes because I'm like everywhere. 
my mind. You know, it's everywhere. So, long story short, I'm not even going to, how we officially met. Well, we met at, a, believe it or not, we met at, a, what was it, on Merson Road at the Winn-Dixie or something like that. We were shopping and stuff. And uh, I saw him coming. We were both coming into the store at the same time because he lived like kind of like around the corner from the store. And so I saw him at the store. We were coming. We were coming in the store at the same time. And then when we were in the store, we actually passed each other at the same time now to kind of make a reference mm-hmm. you know the transylvania reference i don't care about this stuff uh the scammers are just out today like you know the distractions of course they were but this is not your day you, you, this is not the day you scam or get any of my money or anything like that let me finish what i got to say because this is for soldiers too this is for soldiers and soldiers wives this will also help you this is for my veterans and my veteran spouses and stuff because this is a true story of uh you know of how I met the love of my life and what I've had to go through as a military wife and being a military kid that you know we just all of it so we met each other at the store and we were going past each other and it's kind of like that in the cartoon where the movie Transylvania where we just kind of like zing but we didn't know what we said. I was just, cause, okay, let me go back. I, I'm all over the place again. I'm sorry. I'm like my mind, but it's my husband's birthday. And a lot of things have already happened already. Whew. We, I had said that day. I had literally said that day. I was tired. I went through a bad divorce. You know, it was, uh, it was just some, just some shit, you know, going on. And I was just not dealing with anybody, but I wanted to finally deal with somebody so I said you know like God I would like to meet somebody today even if it's just to talk to I would like to meet somebody today and I think I even went to the mall somewhere looking like that I was going to engage with somebody but all I met you know were uh, along the way were like a couple of, of white boys and when I'm like I'm not it's this this can't be it so here I am going to Winn Dixie and stuff like that and seeing this guy and we pass each other in the parking lot. We pass each other in the store. We're coming out in the parking lot at the same time. And he's looking at my car because my car had a Zeta sticker. And he's like, you're a Zeta? And he said it like that. Wrong answer. Because I was very defensive at the time of my sorority. Because for some reason, I don't know why everybody thought all Zetas were stuck up, boring, church girls, uninterested you know something i mean it was it was just an illusion of what people had about zetas and i'm like they didn't know me and they didn't know my line child you know when we were at federal state we ran that shit <laughs> we did that was wild the zeta remember the year that the zetas ruled the yard and we were just like we were just like we were everybody which kind of pissed our brothers off a little bit but we were every everybody wanted to date a zeta <laughs> everybody so anyway you know here i'm on you know in the radio the zeta he says this and so i'm like what do you mean what the what do, what do you mean and so we start out arguing we start out arguing and then he tells me he's in the military and i'm like nope 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 don't do military people don't do military men you guys have a wife at every port or every base you've ever been i don't you got a girlfriend a wife or something everywhere i do not do and for the most part i'm not saying that they do but If you know, you know. So, and the irony is, and, the, and he was like, swearing out, no, I don't, no, I don't. You got me wrong. You missed. I mean, he read me out like a Libra man would do. He read me out lying like a Libra man would do because he was married. But he swore out he wasn't. He swore out that he was, uh, he, he swore out he was divorced. Actually, at the time, he was in the process of getting separated, but he was neither officially separated or divorced, which put me in an interesting situation, the most interesting and weirdest situation I've ever been, because the irony is that he and his then wife lived next door to the woman that my first husband was cheating with, and that's how we got the scoop on 
everything about my and that that ended up okay i'm not even going to that went through some years and drama and court shit and you know people didn't want to get it i mean it's just, i don't even want to talk about that shit because this is my husband's day it's all about him so anyway long story short though we eventually married because <laughs> he stuck he saw what he wanted and he, he wasn't gonna give it up pregnant pause for a reason not pregnant though uh anyway anyway what i did not uh the lesson for me with this is that i had never deal with i had i have never dealt to that degree with alcoholism before or generational curses before not in my immediately not in my immediate family i mean i had cousins that had uh and, and family members that you know were alcoholics and 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 and, and you know and we're dealing with addiction problems and this and that whatever whatever but in my immediate my immediate you know trinity with my mom and my dad i and i and don't get me wrong no one is perfect at whatever this term of perfect is it's not like my mom and dad didn't argue it's not like my mom and dad you know it's like it's not like we didn't you know what I'm saying it, but it was perfect for me and I saw a very stable loving family because my parents loved me 100% and I saw an alpha man and an alpha woman love each other and really love and want their kid I saw that I saw protection I saw love I saw you know both of my parents if either one of my parents thought that I was being harmed or someone was harming me they'd kill you they neither neither one of them had any qualms. Both my parents packed. I told you at the time I, my dad, you know, there's a guy that uh, just became obsessed with me in high school and stuff like that, and he would not like let anybody talk to me. And my dad and, he, and we went to the same church, and my dad took a shotgun to the church and put it up to him, say, "Mess with my daughter, and you will not be here." And he meant it. And people knew that, you know. That's what I told you. My dad was my dad was G. My dad was a real, 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 real G. My mom was G too. See, I, I'm just learning some of the other side of the family. You know, when you know, you know when they, you know, they introduce you to the so-called uppity side, which the uppity side is sometimes the ones that can tell the most lies. But anyway, you see the uppity side, and then you start to go like the side that they don't necessarily tell you about that you thought was just people that were on the street that you went to school with, and then you found out, oh, those are cousins too. And someone said, all of us are cousins on D Creek Road. Everybody's cousins in Cedar Creek. Everybody's cousins. <clears throat> anyway. <laughs> anyway, so so there's some G on both sides of our family, what I'm trying to say. So I, I get my G, honestly. I don't get my G from social media or from movies or shit like that. I get my G, honestly. So anyway, my uh, my husband was the first time I dealt with somebody personally uh, in my life that I had considered my man uh, with alcoholism. He had a very bad alcohol problem. And most people in the military do. But you have to understand what does the military do to people. See... As harsh and as crazy, and they can be as they are, I understand something that most people don't understand. And, and military wide, military families, I mean, military people in the military understand this far more than people who have never been in the military. I hate to be, you know, discriminatory, but, you know, it's one thing when you're on the farm. And it's another thing when you off the farm. Everybody didn't stay on the farm. You had some people that chose to stay on the farm and they stayed and they never fucking changed. Not my parents. My parents had to go. That's not their life. And it's sad that, you know, some people get jealous about that because it's like, they couldn't shoot it. You didn't grow. We're going to stay in the same drug addiction, you know, alcoholism, like where nobody grows and just, you know, just that, that same energy. So, no. So my husband was the different one in his family. He was the different one in his family. 
So you had a family. So he, you were coming from a family of alcoholism. Abuse. His dad was very abusive to his mom. Very abusive. He was the last kid, which some of them, they will always say he was the most like his dad. And I uh, several times remind him, I'm not your mother. And that was in two ways. Like, I'm not your mother. So, you know, don't beat me up like your dad beat your mother up. Or I'm not your mother. I will fuck you up. And don't give a fuck. <laughs> I'm not your mother. I will I will smack back. Bitch, I, why did it take that time to, like, you know, cut off? I know. But it's true. I'd be like, yeah, I, I know. Smack. I would smack you back. Smack then, I'd smack you back. So, uh, we had gone through a lot of lessons together. We had to learn each other because I had to deal with his generational curses. You can never break a person's generational curses. When you choose to do that, understand, number one, you can't break their generational curse. They have to. There is absolutely nothing you can do to break a generational curse. When you got a whole bunch of family fuckery going on, they have to change it. They have to change it. They have to be better. They have to stay clear. But many people can't because, you know, family's family is family. And he came from a family where all the women were basically shrews that I met. They, they, they just beat down men. Mainly, I guess, because the dad, what the dad did to his mom. But it's like, you are not even giving men a chance. So every, I mean, so it was harsh. It was harsh on the men. And if a woman came in who had a little bit of brightness yeah, uh, uh, about her, uh, smart. Because you know how that, that energy usually rolls when you're dealing with, because they were narcissists in their own way. Uh, but maybe from the abuse. But they were narcissists in their own way, beating down the men. And thus, no woman can come in. And no woman can be better or smarter than them. And bitch, I was already better. <laughs> like from John, no, no joke. So uh, that that military brass swag. So that was there was a conflict. There was always that conflict. It was a conflict even when he died. It's well uh, forever for me will be a conflict because you know I don't talk to these people and nor do I ever want to talk to these people. I have missed nothing from any of these people. No offense, but I'm not trying to reach out to none of y'all. So you know it's it's no offense, but you know what you did and you know who you are and no uh, we don't. You, I I don't. Forget you you got millions and millions and millions and millions of dollars worth of records and album. You probably didn't know that. And so that is my um that is my payback because you had money, but you act the ass and you probably threw it away because you stupid. I'm not for you. Are you security? Or are you trying to pull up? I have to watch all the time. Anyway, so, uh, so yeah, so, uh, all the albums, all the music, all the stuff. My husband was a DJ, too. See, we had, we lived in two different places. We lived in, because I was closer to work, we got an apartment. I had an apartment off of, uh, Yak, and I was closer to work, because I was working at Fox at Beasley Broadcasting, part-time, and he still stayed in a trailer, and uh, rolling by his people. I, I couldn't. <laughs> I mean, I would come there as much as I could, and then I was like, I can't, I can't, I am not living here. Uh, so, that is to say, that is to say, though, so you've got that going on in his family, and then so you go to the military to get away and to be better, and he did, and then the military does his shit. But there's some shit in the military. Don't think that we don't know it. But that's what gives me so much more respect for soldiers, because what the government does what civilians do what people who don't get it do you do not understand what these men and women go through and they don't really do anything to help them uh in a very healthy way if they're not alcoholics they're pill poppers of some kind and they get that from the military because the military will give you a pill real quick they don't want to hear your feelings they don't want to hear your drama they are like they're they're they're, they're like mash they'll stitch you up and send you back out to war you'll stitch you up shoot you full of morphine send you back out to war these men and women come in you got my mom was a nurse but let me tell you something 
my mom was a laboratory we had more medicine my mom was a pharmacy whatever was wrong she had something for it the military is about that man they got the you know they got the meds they got the pill they got all that shit but the thing i don't like is that they don't address the emotions that these men and women go through so you can't just give them you can't just pop pills and give them pills you can't just you know because the pills doesn't make anything go away so then they start taking alcohol and then you know they may start doing other things all that's to say is my husband and i really got into holistic the holistic life the holistic eating uh the holistic living because growing up as a nurse's kid, I was realizing with everything that he was going through, this stuff that they were, this stuff that they were giving him, prescribing him, was stupid. It was crazy. I was looking at all my mom's medical journals, and I'm looking at the side effects, and I'm seeing a couple of them in them already. And I'm like, oh hell no, we're not doing this. We got, we we we're not doing this. I remember one night in Atlanta, he was uh, at three o'clock in the morning, three o'clock and three or four o'clock in the morning, he was zoned out on some medication, and he was just like, you know come walk with me like that like come walk with me and mind you my husband was very we were we we, we had our roads we had a full-fledged listen fuck that shit will and jada ain't got shit on us but we had love and we had real love in, in, in ours but i'm like you know up in the you know, that, that, that 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 conflict and stuff like that all of that. I'm Pisces and he's a Libra and I'm a Libra moon too. So you got Libra set a Libra moon and, and shit like that. Man, but you know, we loved each other like no other. I mean, we, you know, we, we kill a motherfucker if they, if, if, if one of them tested the other, we would, we were, we were, we were Batman and Catwoman and Bonnie and Clyde for real for each other. So the fact that I know sometimes how he could like snap off and it's like three o'clock in the morning and he's like, Come walk with me. Come walk with me. I'm like, what? Come walk with me. And uh, so we're walking in an apartment. Uh, where is it at? It was, it's actually near. We, we actually live in apartments near on Mike in, uh, you know, in Atlanta, Tucker, whatever that was called. And so it's three, it's two, three o'clock in the morning. And we're walking in the parking lot. But I'm kind of walking at an arm's length because... I don't know what he's going to do. I don't know. You know, is that walking because you need to talk? You need comfort? You just feel like walking? Are you plotting to kill me? Or what? All of those things run through your mind. And should. Because you never know what a, what one of those things are. Sometimes it is just to walk with you. Sometimes they need to just be talked down. Sometimes that medication got them so buzzed they don't know where they are. And they just need to breathe. Sometimes they just want somebody to be there in case you know like they fall out of something sometimes they might want to kill you that shit be fucking soldiers up you don't know so i'm like you know what no 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 can't be living like this can't be living like this it's like can't be living like this so we really started getting into holistic uh more of the herbs and atlanta was a beautiful place to do that because i mean you didn't you get dumb you can buy shit in North Carolina, you can find not not in two six, not in Fayetteville, you know, more or less anywhere else. I mean, Spring Spring Lake, Lumberton, you know, Stebbin, and it, absolutely not. I mean, Fayetteville was the cream of the crop of all that place. You can find shit in Fayetteville. So Atlanta was, uh, you know, always thinking they know something, but you weren't up on that shit, and yet you were the farmers and had it first. That's a funny thing. That's the curse of Fayetteville. You were a wine capital. You had okay you are wine capital you are like wilmington you have a gift a legacy and you fuck it up with your curses you do that oh wait i gotta take this okay money 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 alignment uh- <laughs> Woo! Baby, 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 baby. By the way, Petra, Petra, the fuck? Well, no, I didn't finish saying what I've got to say. Uh, did I? I don't know. It's just, you know, it's been a good day. It's been a good day. Because that, that Chris Brown song, that Jordan Sparks song, oh, man, see, I can't even talk about it. This happened in 2007. It is 2022. 
And that song still has that effect on me. Ooh, that's when you know there's some people that you all would not want, you know, in your life. Like right now, you looking at them every day and wish they would die. I don't even know why you would live that way because I couldn't live with somebody like that. I could not. And I, like I said, my husband and I by no means, you know, we're like the perfect, like the house kid. We're, well, nobody is because all these people be faking about their marriage. Look at all these marriages that are breaking up and shit like that. None of them ain't real. Oh, we a happy couple. You are not. They're like 99% of Hollywood marriages are fucking fake. So anyway, they in some level or not some level away so anyway though what i'm trying to say is, but with soldiers fuck the fake shit i'm dealing with the real people soldiers have a specific soldiers have specific needs man they need to have specific understandings that they don't get and the military and, and just you or in people who don't give a fuck or people who just go by the book you know just just treat them with pills and shit like that and that turns around and fucks them up and so you got pills on top of alcohol and on top of the emotional baggage because you a soldier can't tell you a soldier's not supposed to feel remember soldiers you know everybody says keep it real but a soldier can't keep it real because if a soldier keeps it real a soldier's motherfucking weak and that even includes the women and i don't know why we speak this keep it real shit when you don't want to keep it real because if a soldier really kept it real on how they feel they might would shoot you all especially now hello are we getting therapy here you see why now i am the therapist because I actually understand, and I'm talking from some real shit, not from a motherfucking book. I'm talking actual experience. I'm talking, no offense to Camp Lejeune, but we did not receive nothing from what you did to all of us with Gulf War and Saudi. These veterans are still having problems getting their benefits. They're still having problems getting their housing. I would have been quick to say it's racial rape because I saw my husband like help everybody and they all got that shit before him. And I could easily say that's some racial ass bullshit until we went to Colombia and we saw this old white man, this old veteran in Colombia and he had been in Vietnam and they still did not. They, he still was fighting for his benefits. And I'm like, God damn. This ain't on racialized. This is just what they do. The military is needed and necessary. Just like police are needed and necessary. It's the motherfuckers that make policy though it's the ones who make decisions who are removed out of the loop and don't understand it's the ones who are so busy living by the book and they don't even see you got that thing going on but your whole family fucked up and you can snap out a second these are the ones who turn around and kill their family the ones who make it seem like we have it going on and we have it together. And we da, 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 da. Either they're so removed, they don't even care. They're making money, golf and whatever, and they don't even care. So they don't give a fuck about the ones who are actually in war. They don't give a fuck. And or they're so stuck in their mind, they're a bit psycho. So, you know, and again, these pill because they don't give you an opening. They don't give these soldiers a chance to vent. They don't give these soldiers a chance to address the real emotional shit of what it feels like when you see your best friend blown the fuck away. When you see your, the part, when you, when you see your, uh, your, your, uh, you know, your one of your troops. When you see one of your one of your you know your your fellow soldiers blown the fuck away, step on a lamp. You don't you, being caught in the crossfire, which my husband, all of that, and then to turn around and then you 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 over vaccinated everybody to the point that you tell them when they come back from the Gulf War, don't have sex with their wives or their husbands. What the fuck? How re how ridiculous? of a statement and you knew that was so I'm thinking you expected us to die or you expected something to happen because you know the first thing these soldiers that we're going to do 
was going to come <laughs> they were going like woohoo i'm back in my baby's arms let's go the only thing about it the babies that came out of those babies didn't live the babies that came out of those babies died the babies that came out of those babies didn't even get a chance to be born. And if some of them did, the financial cost and the special needs cost was so over the top and they still didn't live. 100% ratio, stillborns, miscarriages, deformities, 100% ratio, 100% ratio, 60 minutes did a story on that twice. Excuse me if I'm not concerned about Captain Lejeune. We're right here. What about us? I'm not talking about U.S. I'm talking about what about us? Us here. Because the story was still here. Fort Bray, Fort Air Force Base. Us here. Yeah, right. Yeah. I don't forget shit, remember? I'm a media person. I'm the oracle. I have the library automatically in my head and my heart. I have the Akashic records automatically when I choose to access it. And I have the obvious records. We were here, 60 minutes, did that story here, 100% ratio. We have gotten nothing. Is this being around the curse of favor? I don't know what this is, but I'm just saying you owe us. And now, fine, well and dandy, you know, we have addressed the situation that these soldiers were living in mold, horrible conditions, bear horrible, horrible. I've only been saying that, you know, since the whole goddamn pandemic. Horrible conditions. So you finally address it and do something about it. But now you're trying to relocate everybody and everybody doesn't have the money to relocate. And it's such an unstable situation. But you don't want to address that. You want to say, you not, not all the money you were given to do what you were supposed to do. Now you say, well, we're building be better barracks. But you still got them shuffled all over the place. And then you're not you got the civilian shuffle all over the place because you're changing all the boundary lines and who, who knows what's all going to become Fort Bragg and Pope Air Force Base. Everything, but everybody's moving. And this is like this season too. Like this is like the most, I mean, it's voting season. It's this, it is so much happening right now. That is like insane. The people who make policies are clueless, don't have a clue. And you wonder Anyway, back to my husband. I thank him because it is because of him that, uh, it's because of him that my mom and my dad set me, taught me to be. It was an, a loving tough. And my husband did too. You know, he, um, a soldier needed a soldier. That's why some of you who, who, who've tried to come into view and you wonder why, like, I don't even give you the time of day like that. The best we can be is friends. I mean, I've had, like, radio people. I've had, like, actors. And I've had, like, you know, everybody. Uh, and I'm, and then the nerve that some people think that just because they got a dick, like, all she needs is, like, you know what, if... For the record, if if we if if I didn't find you that attractive in high school or college, I'm you 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 were never gonna be the one. You know, you're never gonna be my king. Okay, I have specific standards. So if you weren't the one then, you went you still ain't the one now. If you were radio or or, 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 or whoever shot this shot before, if you weren't the one then, you're not the one now. So in that, drop that. Don't, you know, like, I I have specific standards, and I know when I see it. And, and, and you know, manifestation is a hell of a drug, because I need a specific type of brother. I need a specific type of man. Uh, color is not specific at this point. I say that, <laughs> you know, I say that, you know, but it is what it is. <laughs> you know, it is what it is. More likely, but I'm just saying that it is what it is. I if you if you if I feel you're on my tribe, first off we're cool. Color's not specific in my tribe. In my bed, I don't know. But <laughs> you know I have specific standards and needs, and I am good without it because I'm good. That's all I'm, I am. I have been shown today. I'm so good. And it's that part. You know, it's, it's my uh, my husband. I'm honoring him because my husband has honored me to the fact that in the most critical time 
of our lives. And this is right now. You guys are living history and history. This right now, this moment right now is okay. This moment right now is the most critical time of our lives. Whatever you thought, however old you are, if you are in your 60s and 70s right now, well, you already seen stuff. So you kind of know. Those, no, no, very few. But you already know. Those who are like my age, we're like the OG. We're like, we're like, we're, we're like that few. We're like, we're like, you know, the civil rights people. We're like the activists back then. But we have to choose something differently. You know what I have learned from me? I have to let this shit go. I cannot be the activist anymore. I cannot be on the protests anymore. I cannot help you people with your problems because I have been trying to solve them for decades and you don't want to listen. You don't want to hear. We have the same problems. The military is fucked up. Government is fucked up. The civilians and the farmers are fucked up. Everybody's fucked up. And nobody wants to look at what the fuck is happening. You all are letting Hollywood and rappers dictate your whole lifestyle. And I and the few of us who know are going, do you guys see what's happening in the world? With the world? With the earth? And you waiting on Jesus? Or you worried about, you know, Jamal down the street when... Matthew <laughs> and it's in full metal jacket mode. Okay. I robot is not just a movie. So I am thankful for my husband to be at this moment the most critical stage in my life. That I mean, I've got to like find some place to live like soon or something. Everything's trans. I don't know. I don't know. I just but everything. Everything we don't know. That's the thing. Everybody is in. Those who know know you're in a mobile mode somehow or another. You know you don't know if it's going to be next month. You don't know if it's going to be next year. But you know it's going to be somewhere between next month. You know, you know it's going to be within the next several months or the or the next year. Everybody's in mobile mode. Even the even the soldiers. If you notice how they can say what they want to, that houses are going up a lot of people i'm one of them not necessarily accessing our fha because we don't want to get stuck in a place where we don't know what's going to happen you know we're like thinking mobile i wish now that you know my first husband i paid more attention when he was driving tractor trailers and stuff like that because i've never loved to drive big things and foxy every station i ever worked with knew that you know and i had to so i'm thankful to all of you who made me drive the vans because I don't like drive even when I had cars I love small cars I don't like thank you to Enterprise who made me start you know I'm renting I'm renting you know I'm you know you know how I get my me you know I got that type of uh, you know, my people my people and so you know I'm riding in Escalades and stuff like and I'm like I don't want to ride like yeah you do you know, and I got used to it. So I'm thankful for learning how to drive that I can't actually drive a camper. Uh, can some of you? Because people are talking about being mobile because we don't know. Stuff is changing. What part of change don't you understand? The only people that don't seem to understand change are the ones who keep doing the same thing. You keep voting the same party. You keep voting the same people. Your person, you, you voting a person who's been in office for over 20, 30 years and ain't done shit new. But you're going to vote them in again, okay, and, and expect them to do what exactly? This is not the time. This is not the time. But you mad at me when I say voting ain't shit sometimes. Oh, yeah, don't even talk to me about this shit. Do you understand the crisis that we're in in the state of the world? I don't give a fuck if y'all think I'm sounding like Jaden Smith right now. But it is some crisis and shit going on in the world. And the birds are right there. There we go. There we go. There we go. You can't make this shit up. 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 I start talking about shit and the shit happens. You can't make this shit up. Well, people think, you know, when people want to pretend this shit. People want to do some pretend shit. I don't be pretending shit. That's why those who really, 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 really know me. No, I don't be doing shit for TikTok or, or Instagram fame or YouTube shit. This is just me being me. Who's been stealing from me? Everybody. All that shit you see, I'm fucking claiming it, and they know that I can. Don't even act like it. 
It's not about that day. It's about my husband. See, because I had a PTSD moment. Because, you know, the record and radio industry will give you a PTSD moment. Radio soldiers, entertainment, entertainment veterans are a lot like, uh, like real soldiers. Oh, you that, you that, because you were in a war. You are in a war in the entertainment industry. Don't think you are not in a war. And it's the same thing. You got the people who are doing the most having to suffer the most because these motherfuckers who do the politics and the politics be making decisions and they don't give a shit about you but you want to sign to a big label when you probably would make more real money going out your truck don't tell me that's your house and that's your car and that's your chain and wow if that don't look like a That car got South Central all over. I'm just saying. I am like, I'm not playing. Y'all are like, this is trippy shit. I see I see how some people like Martin Lawrence, like they, they be running down the street on this shit. Like with like men in black shit and like that. And yet the funny thing is, and I'm going like, mm. we're just like weird to everybody. Because it's like, we're not spooky. Or, no, because I am the spookiest person I know. Ooh, real life shit, ghosts. You know, I really see kids see ghosts, adults see ghosts too. Since the day I was born. So anyway, about my husband. Speaking of ghosts, ghosts are alive. There are some spirit. Remember, spirit never dies. And apparently, you know, I know some people say, "Well, you hold them housebound." I don't hold nothing. How the hell can I hold my mother's spirit? my father's spirit or my husband's spirit housebound if they don't want to be here i cannot they did in life as i'm sure they do in afterlife whatever the fuck they want to do where do you think i get it from why do you think i am not an easy person to groom Ah, even God has a problem grooming me. So I'm just saying because you know, I mean, because Daddy, I mean, that, Daddy knew his daughter. Daddy knew his daughter. That's why Mommy was staring to go like, no, 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 you ain't doing that. So you know, either way. But uh, back to my husband. It's a birthday, and I'm having a good day. It's a good, it's a good day. What's the song the boost plays? It's a good day. So, but really, they really don't address these soldiers uh, the proper way. They don't. They'll just give them a pill, and they'll just you know. And they're hurting. They're hurting. Everybody's got anxiety. Why do you not think the military doesn't have anxiety? Why do you not think your defense were your real ones, not the ones who make decisions upon them? They're all in the motherfucking pocket. You know what? That's a karma for your head, too. And that's why I said, don't don't fucking talk to me about, you know, spooky people and the uppity people, the ones who going to get you in the Illuminati. And all Let me tell you something, motherfuckers. Let me tell you something, motherfuckers. There is something that's always been bigger than you. And you know that. You're not that stupid. If you are, then you're that stupid. It won't matter. But there's always been something bigger than you, bigger than the Masons, bigger than the Illuminati, bigger than the entertainment industry, bigger than the presidents, bigger than the government, bigger than all of that. There's always been something bigger than all of that. Wouldn't it be, and you know for a fact that they're aliens. You know that. Call them whatever. You know that. And we know you know that. We know the records you've burned. We know there's some you can't burn, some you can't touch. We know just like how you tried to burn all the military records. My husband was up on that. He kept his now he kept his records. He kept his records. I learned that from him. I'm not that good at keeping records. He was much better. But I learned from him to keep the records, to keep the receipts. And so I'm thankful to him because he gives me the leverage to speak what I speak. Uh, in my authenticity, in my creativity, I'm not letting nobody punk me, fuck me, or slave me into 
teaching or talking a lie or kissing somebody's ass, you know, because they are, who, who are you to me? Remember, I always ask, are you my daddy? And I'm always nice. I'm very respectful because most military brats are. I'm not going to say all. We can be bratty. We are who we are. But most of us are because our parents were respectful, taught us to be respectful. We know how to say yes, sir, and no, sir, and yes, ma'am, and no, ma'am. You motherfuckers don't. We know how to respect our elders and respect people who have actually shown in action that they have the authority and the experience and the right to be, like, respected. You act like you don't know that. And again, you have military people, real minds and stuff like that, that they have solutions. They have so many solutions. And you have these young kids that are coming up that are actually, you think they're all crazy. And some of them are really are empaths. Some of them really are, uh, the, the adults are faking. But some of the kids, when they're saying they're seeing spirits and they're seeing extraterrestrials, they're not faking. You all can't see it. You think the kids are crazy and you want to pop the pill? Pop the kids on pill. I, let's keep it real. I saw that when I worked at the herb cart. I've always been a healer. I've always been in that line, alignment. When I worked in Atlanta, I worked at the herb cart. Uh, that's when I remember, uh, what's the tall guy? Uh, ugh. What's the basketball player? I didn't even think he liked black women. Uh, John Sally. <laughs> I mean, I'm sorry, John. But I'm sorry, but he said, but you know, I almost punched out John Sally at Linux Mall because I worked at the herb car. So, you know, you see everybody in Linux Mall. And, 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 and you know, I always say, don't roll up on me. Don't roll up on me because I, it's just natural reflect. You got to understand it. You got to understand in my DNA, I'm a G. So, you know, like, don't, I'm, I'm, I'm like, a, what's her name? Uh, uh, what's my girl's name? And, and I, I'm like Vera. And uh, Harlem Nights, like don't, 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 don't roll for me. <laughs> I love myself with Della Reese. Della has always been the bomb. That woman there. So uh, yeah, so he rolled up on me at the herb cart from behind, and he lifted me up. You know, and I'm like, yeah, I'm getting ready to punch him out because I'm like, you know, ah, it's an herb lady. And so I'm like, okay, I'm getting ready to punch John Sally out. So cool. I got hugged by John Sally, who I didn't think like like black women myself, but he loved the herb lady. So and I'm working at the herb cart. I've noticed how many kids were being put on Ritalin. When you are feeding these kids sugar, you're giving them milk and cookies and you're giving them everything that is designed to keep them active. And then you're telling them to go and take a nap. Kids are automatically active. So the logic of that is flawed. Totally flawed. But you were pushing it like it was a law. And the law. And you started dumbing down these kids on these pills and real because they're ADD and they this and that. But the fact that you were giving them too much sugar, you were not feeding them properly. No accountability. Mm, and the government allowed that. Okay. But the thing about it is we have to, just like now, we have to take the possible the, 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 uh, the personal responsibility. Like I got a commercial. I got to cut right now. And I got so much, I got work to do. So I got to take the personal response and I'm going to do it too. But, uh, because I'm about my business, but we got to take the personal responsibility and accountability of the shit that we do. You fed your kids some lies and it's coming back to haunt you. And getting back to the military, you have military brats and kids and soldiers who know what to do. And many of the ones and many of these brats, these new hippies or these new whatever, probably many of them are brats. I'm not talking about the Hollywood motherfuckers and the Nepo kids. I'm talking about the real Avenger brats. Because our parents are the real Avengers, okay? Our parents have and will always be the real Avengers facts and we are the avengers kids and we are like little avengers like facts so we have solutions but you don't want to listen so now we decided well you know what we'll just do it amongst ourselves so that type of movement is going on we just don't know where we're gonna move yet so and that's the story in my head but thanks for my thanks to my husband who because of him in this grave situation where the other money is not there i still have the best health care and your health is your wealth I can choose the doctor I want and the doctor that I feel works with me because I don't know everything, but I know my body and I'm tired of these doctors who act like, you know, they can tell you what to do, which is what they do. These doctors are about business. I'm not saying all of them are. I'm not saying mine's too, but we understand. We got an understanding. So you got to find when you're in a position that you can choose 
the right health care for you, I would suggest you choose it instead of letting the hospital choose it. You know, instead of letting government or politics choose it. Because these politicians are going to go about the money every time. Even the good ones, they find that they come in trying to change. And the other 97% of those motherfuckers are insane. You ever you ever try to be the 1 and 2 and 3% trying to change a whole system? And you really don't even get support by the people that you fought for? That's kind of an impossible situation. So it would behoove us all that we can do for ourselves. So that's why I'm saying I'm thankful to my husband. The greatest lesson and blessing I will ever have. Because he has given me the leverage that I can continue to do for myself. And not depend on someone else's help. And whether it's taking my social security or my widow's pension is still money by me. When I do, you know, my commercials and stuff like that is still money by me. I suck nobody's dick to get it. And I won't. I'm not on that tea. I can't do it. That's not my code. That will never be my code. But I am about my dough. So don't fuck with my business. And I'm a soldier's kid. I told you. Real Avengers do real Avengers shit. Thank you, Bake. And y'all want to be my man. How? <laughs> How? What kind of fake shit are y'all on? What kind of fake fucking trend shit are you all that you actually think that you could be my man? I mean, like, what do you bring to the pot? First thing, you, well, Jesus. Okay, I ain't not seen a plane going right back. Wait, 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 wait. Where go? Where go? It's just big ass plane, big ass plane, big ass plane. You know what? Okay, okay. It's his bird. Libra's flex. <laughs> Libra, the Libra. You know what? It's the Libra tribe. It is the Libra tribe today. The Libra tribe is flexing the fuck out. The Libra tribe in my collective is flexing the fuck out. The Libra tribe is wilding. This is like, yes, yes. Y'all want motherfucking magic? Boom, 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 boom. What type of magic you on? Say it again, baby. Who thinks they're going to come behind and take me from my husband? Who is better than my husband? What are you bringing to the pot? What can you do for me? Marry you for what? <laughs> what? Get the fuck out of here. Y'all just want my benefits. And that you ain't going to get. Or you want me. Or you want me to like give up my benefits. And I'm not going to give up some permanent. Uh, for My permanent benefits for some temporary shit. I know how to do math, motherfucker. I may be a Pisces. And I may be a hippie. But I am like smart. And I didn't need shrooms to do that. Although I do like the idea, okay, now we're getting into like, you know, a place where we can, we can meet, because shroom, shroom, eating shrooms are, are healthy. I mean, I do eat, I do, I cannot eat, uh, I mean, the only shroom, mushrooms I eat are portobello. I love portobello, portobello mushrooms. Portobello mushrooms, you want to try to get off meat, you can make the best anything my husband would make like everything like like pizzas and hamburg he would make the best hamburgers and with uh with portobello mushrooms oh my god he was a chef he was he knew how to he fed me well he fed me well how are you who are you gonna who are you taking <laughs> how are you who are you taking <laughs> it's just my my how can you fight a ghost? Jesus Christ, bruh. And they go to the police. Hello. It's like I got security every motherfucking where. That is a flex and a half. The Lever Squad is flexing their ass off today. <laughs> I'm finding this amusing. I love it. I love it. I love it. So, you know, salute to the real ones. Salute on his day, on Baker's day. This is our own holiday. Salute to the real ones who teach us. Salute to the real ones who love us. Salute to the real ones who protect us. Salute to the real ones who are about that life. And it's with their action, not just their talk. Baby, I love you. You are amazing. And I'm amazing. And we gonna be amazing. And uh, mushrooms the future.
we have different philosophies of but mushrooms are, look into all the other things you know I don't you, alcohol alcohol and, and the drug thing I can't mm -mm. <laughs> I can't you know Saturday returns I learned that's something I don't even dive into that side nope Nothing more than weed. And not even a lot of that. CBD, though. That's another thing. But uh, really naturally, eat better. Eat better. Take charge of your health. Exercise. Your health is your wealth. I don't care how much money you got. If you're dead, what's the point? You know, you get, you, 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 you better make sense. Because it doesn't matter that you got all the money and then you die tomorrow. And let's address the fact, well, we won't address the fact, but we'll talk about the fact of the soldiers and the police department, and the, the official defense workers that we actually needed that you were going to put out of jobs because they didn't take the vax. Now, you all know I'm always about me, 100% in my authenticity. And if I said, something was wrong with the vax then something was wrong with the vax because something was wrong with the facts but I'm crazy okay as people continue to drop dead for, for whatever reason I'm just saying that's alarming Because that's a money train, too. <sighs> you let these people work and do what they do. You worried about... <sighs> Just know to the ones who get what I'm saying, I get you. And you're right. You weren't wrong. I applaud you. For having to fight for your job. Once again. Just to do your job. And protect and serve. But you have to fight for your life. To do it. And people don't even know. And the very people that you're fighting for your life. To protect them. Are mad. At you. <sighs> I get you. My husband too. Me too. Amazing day. Let me get back to work because I can. Happy birthday, baby. Happy birthday. Thank y'all for listening. Thanks to the ghosts.